So, uh, as you may well already know, we have uh, Australian cyclist uh, Rohan Dennis of Garmin Sharp here. Uh, he's uh, from Adelaide, Australia, and he's fresh off of uh, second overall the Tour of California. And uh, so, can you can you take us through uh, from from your crash to your time trial and then to to the win? Well, basically, uh, stage one. Um, I'm fresh enough a fair bit, and I wasn't feeling all that great that day. Um, then to add to it, I, I did crash. I got kamikaze by someone. I thought I didn't need my front wheel. Um, <laughs> then I sort of I got on my bike, and uh, first one was broken, so I got my spare bike out. And um, my my feeling towards the race at that stage was. Uh, not all that um, positive, I'd say. Um, I just sat at the back and just made sure I didn't lose time. And uh, then uh, the next day or that night, um, my team, uh, chiropractors and physios and everything, they looked after me pretty well. Uh, they got me ready for the time trial the next day. They made sure everything was um, working as well as it possibly could. Uh, time trial, as Charlie said, um, it went well, but. We goes just a little bit better, um, and uh, that sort of that put me in a bit of better mood. Um, my second overall, uh, I could I could see a lot of the other GC riders, other than Wiggins and myself, were a minute or more behind. So that that sort of brought my confidence up a bit, and uh, I thought, well, tomorrow's Diablo. It's a it's a stage that I need a I need to give a good crack. I I got dropped with. Two and a half, three k to go um, the year before, um, and basically I just need to sort of hold on to Wiggins as as long as possible and and try try not to lose time against uh, the pure climb, as you could say. So the start of the climb, I didn't feel too great. I I was I was pretty pretty glad. I knew to climb. There was a bit of a flat section with uh, I think it was about ten k to go. And uh, before then, I was I was just aiming for that. I'm like, I just got to get to that point, then I can get some recovery, and uh, and then sort of just play up my ear and hope I start to feel a little bit better. So I got to that point, as I said, got some recovery, and then uh, Tom Danielson and Hanye Acevedo, they uh, they were pretty uh, pretty excited to sort of jump up the road and put some pressure on. On Wigo, and uh, I was sort of holding them back a little bit. I, was, I still wasn't fully confident at that stage. Uh, Hanye came up to me at 5k to go again. Can I attack? I'm like, nope, can not attack. <laughs> Just sit here. Uh, then, then something sort of switched. I sort of came good around 3k to go, and I was sort of looking around at where's Hanye, and he came up to me one and a half k to go. So he goes, Can I attack? I'm like, yep. Go. And uh, at that stage, a couple of other guys had, had launched and it sort of put a bit of pressure on. We go, yeah, the tempo a little bit. And I'm thinking, oh, this, this hopefully hurts him. Um, and he goes a little bit too deep. And it did. He, he, he went straight after it. I think he just sort of, he didn't think about um, who it was. He just saw Garmin and, and chased. And it was perfect. It sort of, it was a sort of final little blow. Um, to his his sort of riding, he likes to he likes to stick to one tempo. So after after he caught Hanya, I, I moved up and pushed uh, a couple of the guys off Wigo's wheel. And <coughs> one k to go, I was I was sitting sweet. Um, I say Adam Yates, he attacked, and I knew the finish was the last two hundred meters was uh, just brutal from the year before. So I I jumped on and. Um, Stetner was on my wheel and he's jumped around just before the, the steep bend. It was perfect. I could line him up and line Adam up and uh, they pretty well just launch pad me to the, uh, to the finish and that was it really. Um, and, and last year you were the overall winner of Canada's biggest stage race, the Tour of Alberta. Um, so 
which is pretty awesome. Uh, now, a lot of us, you know, riders, cyclists, like, can't really uh, fathom what it must be like to experience that level of competition and, of course, to be successful at that level. So what have been sort of your emotions you felt and maybe you describe a couple of highlights? To be honest, it's one of these sports that uh, you can never be 100% happy. Because um, once you are 100% happy, you, you sort of relax and you don't win so much after that. Um, so you, you have to sort of take it on board, you enjoy it, but then you're straight back into work. So um, it's one of those cool sports you could say where, uh, yeah, you don't get to fully enjoy it and uh, let your hair down because it's always someone nipping at your heels. Uh, so we all know that there's a long journey there. What what has been sort of your greatest challenge? Um, last year, actually, uh, first year pro. Um, no one really hears of the struggles, they always hear of uh, the triumphs, you could say. And um, from, so in January I, I went to nationals, I got a good form, I got second and uh, then around the road race, it was three days later, I was feeling a little bit under the weather and I pulled out, um, went to Tour Down Under, uh, got in the hotel, I was sort of still feeling a little bit unwell. I thought maybe I am getting a little bit of cold or um, a bit of a sore itchy throat and ears are a little bit funny, so whatever. I'll probably get sick before this race. So I was targeting it, but whatever, things happen. Um, then, yeah, I think it was the day before the, uh, the Cancer Classic. I, um, I, was, I was really unwell and uh, another team doctor um, looked at me and he said, oh, I think you've got glenshaw fever. And, uh, Obviously, heart sunk. First year pro. Um, I wanted to make a good impression. I wanted to do well for the team, and uh, I was a little bit devastated. I went to the doctor straight away and got some blood tests, and uh, he told the team he didn't want to tell me. Um, he told the team to keep it quiet, but he said I had all the uh, symptoms of viral meningitis. So that was that was pretty tough. So probably about first three months of last year, I was I was struggling to keep my health um, intact. Uh, I was struggling to finish races. I'd finish them, but I was in a bad way. Um, the first time I actually started to feel like something was coming along was just before California, um, last stage of Romandy. And that sort of brought some confidence back and came here. Um, a couple of good stages here. And then I, then I went to Dolphin and uh, everything sort of started to click from then on. But that was definitely the longest um, three or so months that I've, I've had uh, on the bike. Um, so anyways, I wanted to uh, touch on another Canadian connection you have. Um, he's Australian, but he actually has very close ties to Canada. Uh, again, with Tour of Alberta, but also uh, I was in touch with your first coach last week, uh, earlier in the week, Graham MacArthur. Uh, so Graham MacArthur, for those of you who don't know, is going to be the head coordinator of the Milton Velodrome, which will be completed in uh, the end of this or later this year. Uh, but Graham says that you, he is the reason you are a cyclist, and uh, he said he pulled you from uh, swimming, and he identified your talent uh, in Australia when he was running the program there. Yeah, um, there's a program we've got um, the whole of Australia, so, but we've got um, sports institutes in every state, uh, so. Every, every state goes out with their own institutes or schools and does tests um, on the shuttle run or big test, I'm not sure what you call it here, um, 40 meter sprint, uh, your reflexes, all, all sort of fitness tests. Um, then they put you into a, a sport that physiologically you should be good at. Um, so initially, they're like, okay, you should be good at cycling. Um, but, <laughs> Okay, I'm not, not really into wearing tights, uh, but <laughs> um, I'm going to do it. It's they give you a full year. Um, you get a you get a bike, you get track and road bike. Um, you get um, club membership. They pay for all your races. They uh, they pretty well support you with coaching everything, um, bike loads, yeah, the whole lot. So I thought I'll, I'll do it. I'll use it as cross training for my swimming. Um, Swimmers usually are a little bit bigger in the upper body with no legs. Um, so I thought, well, it won't hurt me. I'll, it'll improve my kick. Um, about four months in, I uh, 
decided to flick the swimming. <laughs> Stick with cycling. Um, but initially it didn't go down so well with my parents, um, or my swimming coach. Um, both of them disagreed and uh, said that I should stick with swimming and uh, just give it a little bit more time and um, in my own head I was like, no, it's not going to happen, but I'll keep swimming, keep everyone happy and yeah, I, I didn't realise, well, I know Graham very well, but um, I didn't realise he had something to do with the, uh, the selection, I just knew he was my first, te technically my first cycling coach. Yeah. You mentioned one leg in efforts, can you tell me what kind of power you push with just one leg? Um, it was under 19s, but I had a few numbers, so, I, um, so it was a three month period, at the start of three months so I did a four minute max test, uh, that was, no, no, no. Oh. two legs, sorry, okay, yeah, two sorry. legs, um, so it was two legs, so I did 477 watts, I think, four minutes, um, so it was under 19s, leading, coming to second year, uh, then I did another test after about one and a half, two months. Uh, after doing a lot of one-legged efforts, their theory was all your energy is going into one leg, um, so you can actually overload it. Uh, so if you can hold 477 watts for with two legs, they try to get you to hold 270 with one leg, and it was actually it did work. Um, and in the end, I've got to I think it was 314, 320 um, with one leg for three minutes at a time. I, mean, I do one leg for a, a heap of efforts, um, then I'd go to the next leg and, and do that. They'd put a 10 kilo weight on the other crank, so it would sort of be like you've got a um, another leg, so it's almost quite what we would say. Um, and then after three months, my, well actually my VO2 at the start was 83, I think. And at the uh, at the end, my power was five nineteen, and my VO two was ninety one six. So three months. Ninety one six. Three yeah, months later, it uh, it went through the roof. Um, yeah. So we'll start training with one leg, I guess. <laughs> More all track it works. What? <laughs> um, of course, uh, so you've had a you've had a fantastic year this year. Uh, Tour of California. So. What's what's next in your program? Uh, what are your big goals for the year? Um, so the next one program was Dolphin, but it's now changed to Swiss. Um, to a Swiss. Then it's uh, there's two options of teams thinking of. Uh, there's Tour de France. Then I do the American scene, which is same as last year: Utah, Colorado, Alberta. Hopefully, I do um, the Worlds as well. Uh, also throw in. Uh, Commonwealth Games, hopefully I get picked for that team. Um, but the team's also a little bit concerned, I think, about me starting in January and having to go for so long without a rest. So, um, JV, um, John Porters, uh, he's spoken to me briefly about his thoughts and uh, he's thinking of maybe pulling me from the tour and doing Austria, Poland, then the Vuelta. Uh, so that's that's sort of a second <laughs> option at the moment, I, I believe. And it won't be fully decided until probably a week before the tour, which is quite short notice. But um, <laughs> but yeah, I'll be I'll be pushing to sort of do tour then the American scene, a little bit more relaxed second half, you could say, yeah. a little bit more enjoyable. One of the best races in North America, but a little more relaxed. Perfect, right? yeah. <laughs> um, so finally, I guess uh, you know, uh, I guess in, in a nutshell, what 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 is the biggest thing you hope to do in cycling? What's your big uh, overarching goal beyond twenty fourteen? I suppose. Oh, love to be a Grand Tour contender, but it's I'd say it's probably about four or five years away. Um, that's that's the main goal. I'd love to be able to contend at a at a Grand Tour, uh, the Rio Olympics. That's the time trial there, and uh, and the time trial World Championships is uh, is probably the three the three main things I want to long term work towards. Yeah. Well, that's pretty much it. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much.